Aristotle is the topic of today, finishing off our Greek philosophers. We started with Socrates, then we moved to his student Plato, and then we moved to, finally, Plato's most famous student, Aristotle. Now, a fun little acronym, if you need to know the order, is SPA, right? I like to go to the SPA, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, if you need to know which ones come first. Kind of stupid, but whatever. Now, Aristotle is going to basically be, the way, the way you help differentiate between Aristotle and Socrates and Plato, you want to think about Aristotle as the scientist of the group. He's a very, very logical, mathematical thinker in the way he goes and, and does his philosophizing, if you want to call it that. One method that he's going to use is called the method of a syllogism, which basically goes and takes things that we call axioms, which are things that are accepted as true, he puts these statements together, and then you come out with a conclusion. It's almost mathematical in nature. They can be, obviously, mathematical in nature, kind of if-then statements. But then you can also do it just with logical statements, with the words, which I'll show you. In addition, he had what we call his theory of universals. And with the theory of universals, what essentially it is, is that something, the essence of something exist in itself, not outside of time and space. Now, let me explain what this means, because this is kind of a strange concept that you probably haven't thought of before. The theory of universal says, I'll take a, something very simple, take an apple. The essence of being an apple, appleness, if you want to call it that, is within an apple itself, inside the arrangement and the materials, and eventually, whatever makes an apple, an apple is within the apple itself. Now, this goes back to this next point down here, differences from Plato. He disagrees from his teacher in that Plato would say that the essence of appleness exists basically out in what he calls the forms, which he talked about last time, in time and space outside this universe. But Aristotle, being the scientist, says that the essence of something exists in and of itself. So the essence of an apple is in the apple. Plato said the essence of apple is a concept that exists outside of time and space, if that makes sense. So like I have written down there, he is very, very into scientific knowledge. He's a scientist. He goes and writes down a lot of stuff. Stuff that, by the way, is incorrect. Later we'll learn with Galileo that Aristotle's theory that the, that the Earth is the center of the universe, the geocentric theory, is false. And Galileo's theory that the Sun is the center of the universe, the heliocentric theory, is actually true. He goes and classifies, basically, creatures into creatures that have blood versus creatures that don't have blood. He goes and is involved in dissection of animals. He's in botany. He goes and proposes the five elements. Basically, he adds, basically there is already four elements, earth, water, air, and fire. And he proposes ether, which is like the heavenly substance. He also talks about the four causes, and I'll show you some examples. The first cause is called the material cause. Basically, everything is made up of something, what the actual material is. Then you move on to the formal cause. That's the way it's actually arranged, and the arrangement means something. Then there's a source of change, which is called the efficient cause, and then what is it, the purpose, which he calls the telos. Telos is like goal or purpose. What is the purpose? And the purpose of humans is to flourish, to go and, and thrive. And we'll talk about kind of these examples, uh, this concept with some examples. Now here's a syllogism. It's based upon a major premise, then you have a minor premise, and then you have a conclusion. By the way, these things don't have to be even be true. Obviously, you want them to be true, but if they're not, that's okay. So let's start off with the major premise. All men are mortal. Then we go on to all Greeks are men, and then what can we conclude? The conclusion could be that all Greeks are mortal. You're taking this statement, then you're adding that statement, and you're coming up with this conclusion. Get you some more practice here. Let's assume no homework is fun then we can also say that some reading is homework. Put this and this together, we get, get, we get this. A logical conclusion would be some reading is not fun. If you like math or kind of these logic puzzles, that's the idea where it comes from. Major premise, some cats have no tails. A minor premise is that all cats are mammals. Put this and this together, and we can conclude logically that some mammals have no tails. Now let me give you an example of the four causes. Let's take a seed. Uh, the, what is a seed made out of? Okay, whatever, I don't, I'm not a scientist, but you know, the seed itself, whatever those materials are. The formal cause of a seed 
is the essence of BNC, the arrangement. It is shaped this big, it is this many inches, all that. What causes a change in the seed? Sunlight, gardener, uh, soil, all that stuff. And then what is the telos? What is the goal of a uh, plant or a seed is a plant, excuse me. Let's do it for a house. The material cause of a house is the wood, the nails, all that stuff. The formal design is maybe it has this many bedrooms and this many kitchens and the blueprint. It's a blueprint. And then you have the efficient cause. What changes a house or what creates a house? A builder or a construction company or whatever. And then what's the final cause? Let's say what the goal of a house is, is giving shelter, you know, family, stuff like that. Famous, famous Renaissance painting. I got to talk about it. I love it. It's the School of Athens by Raphael. Now, which one, use your little logical brain here, which one would be Socrates? The answer is none of them. Uh, which one would be Plato? Which one would be Aristotle? Okay. If you know that Plato is older than Aristotle, this guy has to be Plato. This guy has to be Aristotle. Now, this actually emphasizes their theory about knowledge. As you can see, Plato is pointing up to the heavens, while Aristotle, his young student, is pointing down to the ground. If you were talking to Plato, where knowledge comes from and stuff like that, that we talked about in the last lesson, the knowledge comes from the heavens. However, the scientist, his pupil, Aristotle, was going to say that we can go in through evidence, empiricism, find what something is here on earth. So you can see the distinction, Plato looking up to the heavens as a source of knowledge, while Aristotle saying we can go and do that through earth. So you can kind of see, very, very famous painting. A bit more, Plato had uh, formed the academy, Aristotle formed his school, which is called the Lyceum. In addition, you probably heard this, and we'll talk about this, Alexander. He was actually a Macedonian, northern Greece, and he tutored Alexander the Great. He also wrote about ethics, and ethics uh, basically going in and doing right or wrong and how to, how to do that. He wrote about ethics, and he said, as much as it's nice to go and debate ethics and find out what right and wrong is, more importantly, when you're doing something ethical, is actually doing it, putting it into practice. What's the point of knowing something good? Well, what's right and wrong if you just don't do it? And he writes about his beliefs in the political realm in his book Politics. And the reading that you guys did talked about the three types of what he calls like basically true forms of government and then the three perversions, the three messed up forms of it. You basically have three options. You have to put power in one, few, or many. And there's a good way to do it, and there's a bad way to do it. A good way would be looking out for the public in general, which you can do through those three different forms if you do it correctly, or if you're looking out for your own self-interest, either by the one, the few, or the many, that's going to go and have a problem with government. So very, very interesting reading. Take a look at that. There is young uh, Alexander learning from Mr. Uh, Errol, and they actually found the remains of the Lyceum in 1996. Not much to look at, but there you go. Aristotle, the last of the three philosophers, rounding it out for you guys.